All right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, studying, and I had a clinical meeting this morning, and out of co-occurring disorders treatment workbook, we were looking at depression and substance abuse. Um, I really need to go to both bipolar and um, substance abuse because I wasn't surprised, but I wanted to kind of like further and just talk to everyone out there. Um, 2.2 million is suggested that people have bipolar uh, depression, different from schizophrenia because you have other um, episodes, uh, but this is bipolar and substance abuse because usually people try to control bipolar symptoms um, with substance such as alcohol, drugs, and um, hallucinogens, uh, medication. Um, I said drugs, but drugs um, are different forms, you know, so you can have um, someone that uses other people's uh, medication, that kind of thing. But anyway, 2.2 million people is what we um, discussed. And um, when my clinical Michael Smith was breaking it down, he was saying um, that means Nevada, um, everyone in Nevada has symptoms of bipolar. So let's look at some of the symptoms. Um, bipolar disorder uh, will bring about, it's a manic symptom and then it's depressive. And, you know, um, a lot of this is not foreign to me because me and him have been together probably about eight years, my clinical, um, in the work of mental health in this profession. So some of the manic symptoms are euphoric moods, Highs, you know, where you just feel like you can conquer the world, irritability, inflated uh, self-esteem, decreased need for sleep. That means that the person or you are not resting at night. Distractibility, racing thoughts. Um, and, you know, if you have, I think uh, many times he's told me, my clinical has told me more than four four of these symptoms, five of these symptoms we could look at three that you should get um, a, a psychological or, you know, psychiatric <clears throat> um, evaluation. Um, increase goal-directed activity, meaning that the person just works and works. Um, um, I want to read this. A great deal of time is spent pursuing specific goals at work school or in sexual activities, excessive involvement in pleasurable activities. All right, so that's the manic part. Um, the depressive symptoms are moods of depression, loneliness, diminished interest in pleasure, you know, things that you like to do in most cases every day. That's how you can gauge it every day. Um, change in appetite or uh, weight gain. You know, you're eating more than usual. Something is bothering you or eating at you. Um, change in sleep patterns. You're sleeping more or you're sleeping less than normal. Uh, fatigue and loss of energy. Most people with depression will not be able to function. And with bipolar depression, they won't, sometimes, a lot of times, they won't be able to get out of bed without um, encouragement or someone to push them. Uh, change in activity levels. Um, they're not as active and um, inappropriate guilt, meaning that they have guilt that um, um, they, some people have guilt because they're sick. You know, uh, bipolar is not just something that we're, we're born with or a biological disorder. It can be something that was depression, and that's what we discussed as well, um, depression that we've allowed to go too long. And it's built up and turned into something else because the brain hasn't been able to heal from maybe 10 years ago of holding depression. So if someone has been sick, they can hold guilt about sick. You can't feel guilty about being sick. What you can do is learn how to change your mind 
and heal and also release the guilt because being sick is a natural process in the body, although it could be coming from something else. But as we hold guilt as a thought, it just makes us sick even more. And now the brain is affected. Um, blame, blaming ourselves and, you know, also blaming um, others. But we're talking about inappropriate guilt, recurrent thoughts about death. Anyone out there that's thinking about suicide or planning to, you know, you get that suicide hotline number and you dial it. I'll put it in the description box. Um, deceit, decreased concentration. You can't concentrate because the mind is everywhere. Um, the mind, and that's mostly every day, convoluted thinking. It's like distorted. Um, fatigue and uh, um, loss of energy is, is almost every day. You don't get a break from Oh my God, I'm just, what is going on? I'm tired of feeling like this. I can't get out of the bed, but I can't even think, you know, I'm angry with people. I can't have a, a, a healthy conversation because I'm talking with myself. Um, other symptoms are hallucinations, delusions, and uh, the connection between bipolar and substance abuse is using substance that's not been um, prescribed um, to alleviate those emotions and feelings that I, I discussed with you. Um, there are mood stabilizers that are used, um, anticonvulsants, um, antidepressants, um, and that is uh, the psychotherapy aspect treatment um, and, and support groups. That's what where you would head to if you ever had any any um, of these symptoms, and it would be at least three to five of the symptoms that I I gave out of the mania um, aspect and the um, depress depressing or depression aspect. I'm sorry. Um, so again, treatment. What's the solution? getting treatment. Um, I always tell people that I'm a solution-based individual. Um, working with the clinical that I do, Michael uh, Smith, um, we believe in solving problems. And what that means is, is that you can have a healthy life if you work towards it, but nothing can change if you stay in the same place. So treatments um, are geared around medication, psychotherapy, and support groups. I thought I would come on. I probably would share more of this because we're still in a time where um, people are taking in the news. And that's the one thing to do if you have depression. The news is not what you want to look at. You want to look at the good news. And the good news definitely is in the Bible. And so, you know, you want to read some scriptures and do some affirmations. And really, that's psychotherapy. Um, in my sessions, in my classes, that's what I teach uh, people is to change your mind. Um, the last two weeks, I've been doing concepts of writing little posts on Facebook at, you know, Kim Warner 27. That's my handle um, on shift your mindset, because if you can learn how to shift your mindset, then what happens is, is that depression cannot stay between mania with bipolar depression or a bipolar uh, disorder um, between mania and um, depression, what, what we have is a need to bring balance. Um, and Michael spoke it well. He said, it's like a pendulum going back and forth, but if the pendulum doesn't stop in the middle and it just, you know, it stays there and dangles, then the balance is not there. And that means that, okay, I'm back over in depression. I'm back over in mania, but when will I stop here where the balance is? You see? So anyway, I hope this helps someone. You know, you can always reach out to me because in between encouragement, if I do um, some spiritual content, um, I'm always putting information out that's going to help us think beyond our circumstances. So be blessed. And have a wonderful day. And I do think I'm going to come on and give more information about this mental health because it's spiritual. You know, go in and take your mind and your thoughts back. Blessings.